Hello everybody, welcome to Mr. Stanley's Chess Academy. This is the expert course lesson six. Now one of the best ways to learn and develop your chess is to look at the, the games of past masters. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a, a famous game of chess um, and we're going to see what strategies and what technique we can learn from it to help our own game. So the game we're going to look at is a very famous game called the Opera Game of fifth of 1858 and this was a game of chess played by a very famous chess player called Paul Morphy. Now Paul Morphy was an American young chess prodigy. Um, he, uh, he played lots of the European chess superstars when they came went to America on kind of chess tours and even at a young age in his teens he would destroy them. So he was invited to Europe to uh, in his late teens early 20s to um, tour Europe and play people um, across the continent and he always destroyed all of the top chess players at the time. There weren't official world championships then but many considered him to be the world champion at the time. Um, tragically for chess he decided to give up chess at the age of 22 so all of these great games that he had were in his late teens and early 20s um, he decided to try and become a lawyer didn't do very well and then just just lived off his family's wealth in his 30s and 40s probably drank a bit too much and then died um, of a stroke in his late 40s so quite a tragic story but at his prime he was a fantastic chess player um, and in 1858, he was in Paris, and two uh, very rich aristocrats, one of them Charles II, the Duke of Brunswick, and the uh, the other one called Count Isouard of, of Vauvenal, something like that, uh, they uh, they decided to, um, to team up and challenge Paul Morphy to a game of chess. And they played this game of chess at the Paris Opera. And there was an actual opera going on whilst they were playing it. So there was music and singing on the stage and a full audience. And they had their own box. So that's not an actual box. That's a reserved seating area in the theatre where they played out this game. And it's a really good game to look at because it shows us all the key principles of, of good openings. It shows the, um, the importance of attacking chess if you're white. And it shows some really nice... Um, um, uh, uh, techniques and the importance of, of maybe sacrificing your pieces sometimes for uh, to do a really good attack. So let's have a look at it. So uh, so Paul Morphy is playing white and he starts the game with the opening of e4, moving a piece into these four central squares and attacking this square. The um, Duke of Brunswick and Count Isouard reply with e5. Again, uh, pawn in the middle square and attacking this square. Then, as we've seen so often, white moves their knight to f3, attacking this central pawn. Now, the usual development of this situation is black defend that pawn by moving the knight out here to c6. But that isn't what the Duke of Brunswick and Count Isouard decide to do. They decide to defend this pawn by moving this pawn here to d6 protecting it now this is known as the fiddle defense and it is uh, you know it is an acceptable defense but it's quite tricky to play um, and it also blocks off this bishop so this bishop can no longer charge out onto the battlefield it's now quite blocked off but this is what they decide to play anyway maybe they're a little bit scared and hesitant of paul paul morphy's reputation at this stage, Paul Morphy continues uh, the attack. And instead of playing the Italian opening immediately, moving this bishop here, he actually strikes into the center again by moving this pawn here to d4, attacking this pawn here. Now, black is not going to take this pawn. They're not going to take it because what would happen next is the queen would take back and white here have got two powerful pieces in the center um, black has only actually developed a pawn one square so white is in such a strong position here that uh, that black would not consider taking that pawn 
And so um, Duke of Brunswick and Count Isoire, they decide to move their bishop here to g4. And as we've talked about before, this illustrates the pin beautifully. This now kind of negates the power of this knight uh, because it can't move. Because if it does, the, the queen will be taken. Paul Morphy, undeterred, continues his attack. He takes the pawn here on e5. Now at this stage, many inexperienced players might be tempted to take this pawn back because they might think, oh, a point for a point, need to keep the points equal. However, that would be absolutely disastrous. And here's why. If you take this pawn here, it opens up this, um, this file here. So the, the white would then take the black queen. Not to worry, you might think it's black. I can now take the white queen back. However, you've now moved your king. If you move your king, you cannot castle. So there's no way of getting the king to safety now. The king was stranded in the middle. And also, this knight is no longer pinned because the queen's moved. So this knight is now free to come and capture this pawn with uh, attacking the bishop and a possible uh, attack here on f7, which will lead to a fork between the king and the rook. So that would be disastrous. Um, so... Clearly, the Duke of Brunswick and Count as well, you know, they're, they're amateur chess players, but they are they are pretty good chess players. So they are they are not going to to do that. They're not going to consider that. So what they do instead is they take away the threat of this knight and they decide to take the knight there, maybe hoping maybe the pawn Morphy might make a mistake and take with his pawn, doubling up these pawns. But of course, he doesn't. And he takes with his queen. Now this queen has moved, it's now safe for black to take this pawn here. So in this position, we can see that white uh, has the queen out, has, has a little bit of strategic advantage, but it's, it's not disastrous um, for black in this situation. But we then have um, the continuation of the opening, so now moving out the minor pieces uh, moving the bishop to c4, the position it would uh, adopt in the Italian game. Now, as you can see, we're now setting up the uh, scholar's mate or fool's mate position, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So even though this isn't happening in the first four moves, just knowing this pattern, knowing that it's a, a good thing at the start of the game to attack f7, sets you up to, to play a strong game. So now black has facing this threat of a possible checkmate next move and needs to respond. So um, Duke of Brunswick, Count Isoire and Count Isoire, they move the knight here, blocking this attack. OK, so they're, they're safe for the time being. Now, so at this stage, the next move that Paul Morphy makes is, is, um, is a very good, aggressive, well thought out move. All right, so I'm just going to pause here to see if you can see it. So if you're Paul Morphy, it's your move, you're white. What is the best next move that you can make? You might want to pause the video at this point. Um, there are various, various options. Um, you might think about maybe sacrificing the bishop here. Uh, and taking f7 to improve your position. You might think about developing some developing some pieces. So maybe the, the, the knight there, or maybe move your, your bishop out. What Paul Morphy does, though, is he moves his queen across here to b3. So what you have here is you're creating, again, this double attack on the f7 pawn. Now, the name for this is a battery. So just this, uh, it's a military term for um, firing many cannons uh, at once. So here we have a battery onto f7. So both the, the, um, both the bishops attacking it and the queens attacking it behind it, okay? It also attacks this weak b7 pawn with looking at taking this um, this stranded rook as well. 
Okay, so this was an incredibly um, powerful move by Paul Morphy. Duke of Brunswick uh, and County Zouar, they actually come up with quite a good response to this. So they move their queen now to e7. So this is uh, protecting f7, knowing that actually they might lose um, might lose a pawn and maybe a rook but actually they're they're, they're saving this uh, this weak position here now at this stage paul morphy uh, looks hard at the game and he makes a move which uh, later computers have kind of shown might not have been the best move all right the best move modern computers and modern chess thinking is to go ahead and to take this pawn here um, or, or at least maybe to go and take this pawn here. But he doesn't do those things. Maybe he's in a bit of a hurry. Maybe there was a very exciting bit going on in the opera and he was distracted. Maybe he just had a deeper plan which his genius could see, which we can't. Um, whatever the reasons, he's dead now, we can't ask him. He moved his, uh, he moved his knight to c3, developing a piece. Uh, putting pressure on the center squares again. So it's a good move. It's a good move, but may not have been the best one at the situation. But these things happen in a game of chess. We're not all perfect. So Black realizes that they're in a little bit of uh, a, bit, a bit of bother, but White has given them a breather. So uh, the Duke of Brunswick and Counties of play actually plays quite a, quite a, a clever move, which is this pawn here to c6. So what this is doing is it's protecting this pawn here and also maybe building a possible attack on this bishop. So the, the immediate crisis is over. Um, on the, in this position, um, Paul Morphy decides to continue to, to put pressure on black, continues to develop his minor pieces and he moves his bishop to g5 again using this 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 pin motif that we've talked about so often um on this knight here so um so further attacking play now the next move that um that the duke of brunswick encounters well play is a, is, is in many ways a mistake but you, you can understand it so in this position they're they're pretty trapped um there's there, there's lots of attacks coming in from all directions um and they they want to try and relieve this pressure they want to try and, and, and push back these attacks so they play um this move here so they move their pawn to b5 and so they are attacking this bishop thinking uh thinking actually we want to make this bishop retreat and that will relieve some of the pressure on this this pawn on f7 paul morphy looks at this position he um he's thinking well actually uh, if I take this pawn here, then I'm going to lose some material. Um, so it will be um, three points I'll lose and lose one point here. But actually, this will get rid of these pawns and then open up all of this space to continue my attack. And so this is what he does. He thinks, actually, let's let's attack this pawn. Now, he's got a choice. He can attack it with his queen, which, of course, he's not going to do because he doesn't lose that powerful a piece. He can attack it with his bishop um, and sacrifice this. Or he's got his knight here as well. And if he attacks with his knight and then this pawn takes, then when the bishop takes, it's opening up this attack on the king. So this is what he chooses to do. So he takes the pawn with his knight. Black thinks, well, okay, if you want to give up your knight, that's fine. They don't have much choice because if they don't take back, they've lost a lot of material and they'll be in a lot of problems in a few moves time. So they take back here and then the uh, bishop pawn doesn't take the bishop the bishop takes the pawn opening up opening up check there 
So, on the ropes now, the Duke of Brunswick, Count Izuwa, um, they cover this check by moving their knight here. All right, so, uh, so they blocked that check. But, you know, you might think, well, actually, that's okay because that knight is covered by that knight as well. All sorts of mouse issues today. Um, but remember that that knight is pinned. So if that did happen, then black would be in an even worse position. So the next move that Paul Morphy does is uh, the other key move that he does uh, in this attack. So I'll pause and I'll see if you can do it. How should, you know, Paul Morphy's in a really strong position. How should he continue this attack to really finish finish uh, the, the two European aristocrats off. So pause the video now if you want to give it a little bit more thought. The key move that, um, that Paul Morphy does is he castles and he castles on the queen side. So the king goes to c1 and the rook goes to d1. As you can see this is creating another attack onto this knight. That knight can't move out of the way because it's pinned. Um, and so this is becoming a really weak point. Black responds in the only way they can and they move their rook here to defend the knight there. Now the attack, the attack continues. Now there's lots of options here and you might be tempted to carry on attacking with your bishop thinking about material, thinking, oh, it's three points for three points. You know, maybe that's how you should attack. But that is not what Paul Morphy does. Paul Morphy um, sees that actually there's this other rook here that is waiting to come into the fight. So how can we unleash the power of this um, rook in the corner? So he moves his knight, his rook, sorry, and takes the knight here. Of course, not going to take with the queen because it will take, be taken by the bishop. Not going to take with this knight because it is pinned and will take the queen. So black's only option really is to take with this knight. And then along come the, the uh, more bombardments coming in from this rook here. Moves on to d1. Things are looking really bleak now for black um, and the Duke of Brunswick and the Count Izuwa they, they think carefully and they actually come up with quite a good response. The Queen shuffles forward to e6. Now, the purpose of this move is to relieve this pin. This now means that this knight can cover this square here where all the danger is happening. It also releases this bishop out. So if you look throughout this attack, this rook and this bishop, they're completely cornered. They, they can't do anything. Um, so, so that's quite a quite an intelligent move. But um, Paul Morphy studies the position and he sees uh, a devastating sacrifice that he can make. So in this position, he now continues the attack. So he launches with his bishop and he takes the rook. The knight is now freed to take the knight, to take the bishop back. Um, Black maybe sighs, sighs a little sigh of relief because, um, you know, it looks like that, that attack is all over. You know, if the if the rook comes down and takes that, then that's easily taken by the queen or by the king. Um, this this square here, which is possible check square, is covered by the knight. You know, it is now looking almost respectable. However, Paul Morphy spots the sacrifice he needs to make. And I wonder if you can see it. I'll I'll just I'll just stop talking just for a second to see if you can spot the move, the killer move Paul Morphy makes. Well, hopefully you've seen it. Um, I just mentioned this 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 possible queen exchange as well. So black is trying to offer a queen exchange to white, 
which would clearly be a good thing for black. And if you're ever under attack, try and exchange your ex queens away because that does not take the wind out of your opponent's sail. But Paul Morphy doesn't want to exchange queens because he's the one attacking, so he doesn't do that. The move he makes is to move his queen to b8. Check. Lunacy, you might say. Uh, call him a, a world champion. Look, he's just lost his queen. And, and, and the Duke of Brunswick and Count as well maybe thought this and got very excited, took his queen. And they thought, ha, we've got, we've got him now. But did they see the next move? The next move is the, the rook coming down and getting checkmate. So the king cannot move because there's this kind of safety belt here strapping him, strapping him in from the bishop. And Count Isawa and the Duke of Brunswick lost the game. And this checkmate pattern, where you have this kind of safety belt from the bishop going across, and then the knight getting checkmate here, is actually called the Morphe Mate because of this game. So there we are. That is the opera game. Um, maybe watch the back video back through. Make the annotations of what the game's moves are, play it out on your own board and see if you can learn it off by heart because it's a really good game to have in the back of your head when you're in some of these situations.